He is a self-taught coder from Malaysia and then has been coding professionally for more than 15 years now. Today, he runs his own software development company and co-founded several startups. The topic today will be supercharged Django for supercharged Django for modern web development. So Django is a sturdy, popular, high-level and solid Python web framework. In this talk, a uh, speaker is going to explore how to push Django into its limit, making it a serious contender in the modern times and the world of linked data and artificial intelligence. I'll pass the floor to the speaker. A round of applause, please. Thank you. Hi. Um, okay, the room is not empty, I guess. Uh, very good. <laughs> so, um, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, so my name is Ren Yi, and uh, this will be my talk, Supercharged Django for uh, Modern Web Development. So uh, basically what I'm trying to do here is to share some of my experiences uh, over the years for using this uh, Web Django framework. So of course a lot of times there will be questions that uh, linger to your mind, you know, do you really want to change framework or do you want to change language, you know, Python is slow and things like that. These are the kind of things that we used to hear. And um, luckily or unluckily for me, I've been doing this for the past eight years seems that uh, Python has been uh, good enough for me. So I'm just going to try to uh, share some of my experiences with, uh, with everyone. Okay. Um, so a little bit about me, self-taught coder. Uh, I have an IT consultation company and I co-founded uh, several startups. So if you can see, there's uh, some sort of relationship there. So those that kind of thought to pay me, they call me co-founder. Those that pay me, they call me consultants. All right, so I've been working on uh, projects like uh, software as a service analytics uh, AI. So I've been doing Python for almost eight years now. Um, so uh, before I start, because I'm trying to talk about how to improve Django, so can I see a raise of hand? Uh, how many of you are web developers? All right, so do you guys use Django? Okay, so uh, let's set the pace to that. Um, Okay, so this is a description about Django for those that are not familiar. So this is from the project page itself. So Django make it very easy to build uh, web apps quickly and with less code. So uh, this is very good for, especially for me who is involved in the startup environment. So there's only two types of startup environment usually that we have. Either it's a very fast pace or it's something that you need to build and prototype very quickly. Sometimes you don't even know what you need to build, right? And you get requirements coming in and say that uh, we need to do A, tomorrow you need to do B, C may deploy to do C, right? So it is something that changed very, very fast. Um, okay, so just a quick look at Django without going too technical. So basically, Django is a web framework. It's a MVC kind of framework. And uh, basically, it's a collection of Python modules, right? So uh, the point I'm trying to make here is that if you can optimize Python, you can optimize Django. Basically, that's uh, one of the things that I'm trying to do here. And I'm looking at web framework. When we talk about web framework and optimizing web framework. Basically, I think we are just talking about these few things, you know. A web framework's main job is basically to take in a request, process the request, and just uh, return some sort of response that we need, right? So the thing that we usually try to optimize is the, I mean, this part here, right? Other than the codes itself. So we want to take in requests faster, we want to process the request faster, and we want to return the response faster. So how does this translate into Django? Um, so for those that are familiar with Django, will know that Django is basically a web framework with a lot of tools, right? A lot of tools built in. That's why we don't have to Google a lot, don't have to like find other alternatives. And uh, basically, I think we can split Django into like five main categories over here, all right? So basically, we have the part that Django helps us with the request coming in from the user. And um, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but basically, this is uh, all the Django modules. Um, I'll try to read up some of it. Uh, on the request side, you have things like uh, form processing, uh, authentication, cache management, you know, the views, the query decks, right? These are what Django helps us to process the request. Um, and on the response side, we have things like, you know, CSV response, PDF, file response, streaming response, right? And of course, on the database side, where the Django ORM is, that's where we have things like uh, the query sets, you know, the um, database API to multiple database, database routing, you know? And of course, the goodies where we have the built-in admin, uh, Joe, Django, or you know, all the other tools that uh, Django can read that are, may or may not be available in other web frameworks. 
And of course, the web stuff, which we don't use much today, you know, things like uh, RSS feeds, you know, these are all part of Django web framework. So when people uh, talk about Django, uh, basically, they have a very different idea of what Django is, right? But to me, when I talk about Django, Django is just a web framework. The rest of these are just helping me with my daily job, right? Which is why we have to go back to the last slide. When I talk about Django, this is what I really want to do, right? I need to be able to bring in a request and give a response to my client quickly, if possible. <laughs> okay. Um, so that's a quick overview of Django. So of course, the topic for today is uh, how do we optimize Django framework, right? Um, okay, so what do I look for in uh, optimization? As you can see, most of my uh, projects are really short-term project-based, you know, either for startups or for MVPs, for protocols. So when I look for optimization, I'm talking about things like uh, coding speed. You know, is it too complicated to implement? Or you know, does it take a long time to implement? And what kind of impact does it give? Right? The other one is, of course, the ease of maintenance. There's no use to spend three days writing the optimization and you forget how you do it the next day. And of course, to look at the bottleneck of the whole web framework, which is usually the I.O. part. So uh, this is very project dependent. Some projects will uh, you know, vary heavily on the network. Some are very heavy on the disk. Some are very heavy on file access, database access, and you know, etc. And of course, uh, CPU. Usually, if your project takes more CPU, uh, you should try not to use Python, <laughs> to be frank. Okay. And of course, the next bottleneck will be Python. Okay, I know this is a Python meetup, but uh, we have to admit that Python is slow. <laughs> so that is of course the bottleneck that we have to overcome. All right. Okay, so let's talk about some obvious stuff. Um, Python gets better over time. So the latest version of Python is really the fastest version. This is uh, not a marketing, 3.7.4. There are a lot of cool stuff there that really speeds up development, including just a simple F string statement. Right, it really speeds up a lot of string processing. And um, again, since this is the Python data, I would like to advise everyone to write less Python codes, right? Because we know that Python is slow, right? So you try to keep the codes on the minimum. And um, of course, the other stuff, very, very obvious stuff, like a leverage of hardware. If you have memory, leverage your memory. If you have a clock service, leverage your clock service. And uh, infrastructure, things like queues, you know, WebMQ and things like that. And uh, clock services, if possible, let's say you have notifications and things like that, you don't really have to deploy it by yourself. And of course, leverage on other language. One of the cool thing about Python is that uh, we almost have a wrapper or an interface to every single library in the world, which is implemented in either C or you know, other languages below that. So uh, these are the basic things that we do go to to optimize Python. Okay, so let's focus, uh, we'll just quickly go through this uh, C extension, since most of you are Django developers. Um, so a popular one will be PIL, P -I -L, our Python image library. So this is an example of how C speeds up our application by leveraging on uh, C uh, libraries like libjetpack and libtiff on the background, all right? And another tool that I would like to share is uh, libuid. Okay, this is something that uh, if your project requires a lot of UUID generation, every second or every mini microsecond counts. So um, leveraging this on the C extension may be you know, a little bit worthy. Um, the other one will be uh, base64. Okay, so I actually have a simple test script here to show um, how, what's the difference between the speed. I'll try to zoom this out. Okay, um, I think I have two test scripts here. All right, first let's try the um, base 64. All right, so as you can see, um, the C version of the library is uh, significantly faster than the Python implementation, right? So one is using the built-in base 64, which uh, everyone uses, and just by converting it into a C module, you can see that you have a very simple speed performance enhancement. So imagine if you are doing a lot of base 64 processing on every single web request. Right, this actually sums up to a lot of improvement. All right, so um, let's try this on the other one, which is the lib UUID. All right, so as you can see, you can see similar uh, performance enhancement. So this is a very simple trick, and the good thing about most of this uh, library is that it's um, the parameters. Are